This video is just one in a series of videos that show how to use Oracle Apex Application Express version 5 to build a prototype application based on a database in Oracle XE. There are earlier versions of this video series for previous versions of Apex. You can work along with the videos by getting the scripts that are used in the first few videos. And the scripts are available at the URL shown, which is case sensitive. So if it has capital D, you need to enter capital D. Your alternative is you can go to the second link and use the contact page to request that the scripts be emailed to you. If you have the scripts, you can work along with the videos. In the previous videos, we have run scripts that created tables and populated those tables with data, as well as importing from a, a, a comma-separated value file from one of the tables to get data into it. So we're now ready with our database set up and having some data. We're in a good position to start our application. So I'm going to log in as Debbie, one of the designers. And if I go to Team Development, I've added a few things on the to-do list. So Debbie right now has three assignments and has not completed those. Overall, we see that we've got five to-do items completed and four not started. And what I did when I created the assignment task, the to-do tasks for Debbie, is I added due dates. Uh, the others, I was just simply listing the name of a task. But if you add due dates, you can then use the calendar report, and it will show you, in this case, what's due today is Debbie needs to create the application for student team tracking. And tomorrow, she's also responsible for getting a form and report created for projects. So these also, I'm showing yesterday what was uh, accomplished. So that can be very helpful in keeping track of progress on the report. So I wanted to show you that. I'll go now back to the Application Express. And we're finally ready to build our application. The application will simply be a container that holds all the pages and the design elements within each page. Each page is a web page that makes up part of the overall application. So you can click Create here or here. and start the process for creating an application. Uh, this has changed a little from the previous versions. We will stay with desktop because this won't be entirely for mobile development. Uh, but you can click about and read more about how these uh, designations, what they mean when you make a selection here. So we'll go with desktop. This basically assumes that the main the main interface will be through something like a browser on a PC. So our schema is by default the current one that's associated with uh, with our workspace, and the name we obviously want to change. So I'm going to call this students and teams, and then you have a universal theme. Uh, and a theme style. I'm going to stay this with the default here, but then I will pause the video and come back and do a couple of versions of applications with slight variations. So let's click Next. And by default, you get a blank home page. This is also something different from previous versions where we manually added the home page. But now we've got this. If we knew that we wanted a certain number of pages, we could uh, add them here. But we will do that as we go through the development process. So I'll just click Next. And Shared Components. If you had other applications and you had created things such as a list of values, an LOV, uh, and other design elements that you wanted to import rather than recreating, then you could do that here. We'll take the defaults here. 
and we're ready to create the application. So that goes very quickly. So we come back to that particular application. We are inside the application, which we see listed up here. And we automatically get two pages. There's the blank home page, and then there's the login page. So we can open each one of these in a designer view, or we can just run the application. So let's run it. And the first time you run it when you log in, you will have to log in again because of the built-in Apex uh, security or authentication. So we'll click Run Application. And then I can go in as one of my designers. You won't have to log in again whenever you run a particular page in the application during this one session. So what we see here is a very simple home page. You have a left side navigation pane and you have the main section of the page which will display forms and reports. I'm going to pause the video and go back through and create two more um, applications using variations on the color scheme that you see here. So I went through the create application process and Remember on student teams, I took the default theme style. On the next one, I took the Vista theme. And on the third one, I did the Vita Slate theme. So I'll just go into one of these and run it. And I've already logged in. So we see a slightly different uh, or I would say a noticeably different color palette even though the layout is the same and I'll go home and try the Vita slate and so you get this look so three different looks I notice there's also a way to get back to um, if you're going into the application and I'll start this but then back out if I do a create application and desktop, you can get to other themes, but I think this new layout is very nice and probably better designed for the kind of responsive design that that reflect the look reflects the size of the view of the browser that that you're using to view the application. So I'm going to pause the video and get rid of the uh, second and third application. I just wanted to show you the different color palettes. Now I'm going to go into the application and I want to add a form for entering data and viewing data in, for projects and we'll do this by clicking create page. We want to select form and then from the create page, the second page that appears, we want form on a table with report. The uh, I'm going to change the report name. Your page number, your page number may vary from what I'm showing here. That's not really a problem. We could actually enter in the page number, and there might be reasons for doing that. Uh, but for now, we'll take the default. So this is going to be projects list and it'll be list of projects. I'm going to add a breadcrumb although we may not do that in uh, future pages but I want to show you that if we do that we need to select a parent entry unless this is going to be the top level and we can take the default which is based on my page name and we'll see how that appears when we generate this form and report. So I click Next and now we designate our data source. So I select the table within this schema of Teams underscore 001. I will select Projects and click Next. Now I do want it, uh, a new navigation entry in the left na navigation pane, so I select this. And then I select my parent menu. And for the report columns, we see all the columns displayed. The left side area would be for possible columns to display. 
and by default we're getting all columns from the table on the right side which would be the display area so if it's on this side it's going to be part of the display I'll go ahead and click next to the far left of each row in the report we will have an edit icon and so you can pick your image I'm going to stick with the default and click next now we're setting up the form page. Notice the bullets across the top. We're looking at the form page. And so I'm going to change this to project data and project form. Again, I like slightly different names, so it's a little clearer to me later on uh, what, when I'm looking at these names, what they represent. So click Next. And I'm going to, you could leave this as managed by the database row ID uh, when you're making uh, modifications to existing rows. I'm going to use select primary key because I want to emphasize that the role of the primary key. And we have defined the primary key for each table in the database, so it should appear automatically. So I'll click Next. I'll leave the default here, which is we have an existing trigger that uses a sequence to populate the primary key field, which is a which is a surrogate key field, in other words, system generated field. So I'll go ahead and click next. For the form, I want to select from the left side and move over what's available to me. By default, we do not see the system generated primary key field. So I'll go ahead and click Next. It's quite likely you might want to take off the Delete option, uh, depending on the purpose of the application and who would have access to the application. But for our purposes, since it's a prototype, we're going to leave everything by default, at the default setting. So we went through several screens, but it goes fairly quickly. Now we can create that page, actually two pages. And when we do, we come into the page designer view, which you see here. And so I'm seeing, when I click up here, the list of pages. So I have 1, 4, and 5, and then the 101, which is the page number always associated with the login page, the authentication that you get with Apex. So I want to look at uh, Page 4 would be the report, page 5 in my case would be the form, and I want to look at that, so I'm going to come up here and click Save and Run Page. And I'm not going to talk about the complexity of what you're seeing here as Page Designer. We'll see more of that or talk more about that as we get into the, the application development. So when I open this up, what I have is the report. And this is the standard way to come into a, a form is to first view the available data. And I'll come back to this in a few minutes because it, and show a few of the uh, features of an interactive report. But what I can do is click the pencil out to the far left for any one row. And when I do, it will go into the form and show me the data for the form. I could make modifications here and then apply changes, or I can simply click cancel. If I want to add a new project, I could click create. And this could be for local uh, produce, the name of the company, and click Create. And we see that we automatically get our primary key value, and we've added this row. Another thing, now that I'm back at the report, is I can use this, even though we don't have many rows, so the impact isn't that dramatic, but I could come in here and I could type in inventory or part of that and hit enter and it would uh, filter, automatically filter for me. And then I can remove that filter if I want to go back to a full display. I could sort by clicking on a column and doing the sort. Right now the columns headings are based on the actual field names. So we'll take a look at how to make this more user friendly. In, a, in the next video. So we've created an application. I'm going to come back here and go to my application view. And we've created a report and a form for projects.